Spokane is a bit of a forgotten and overlooked Pacific Northwest city in my opinion. I visited Spokane on a couple of occasions and I found it to be a really interesting city. In this series, I briefly cover a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make the city unique. Now let's meet Spokane. I always like to start by exploring how a city wound up being where it is today. Spokane is located at the falls of the Spokane River in northeastern Washington. The river is named after the Spokane tribe who had inhabited the area near the falls. In 1810, the Northwest Company established the Spokane House as the first long-term European settlement of significance in the state of Washington. As was the case with most western cities, growth exploded with the arrival of multiple railroad lines in the 1880s, making Spokane the commercial center of the inland northwest. The railroads also made it a regional hub for mining, timber, and agriculture. Nearly a century later in 1974, Spokane became the then smallest city to ever host a World's Fair when it hosted the first environmentally themed World's Fair known as Expo 74. Today, Spokane has a population of around 230,000, which makes it the 97th largest city in the country and the second largest city in Washington. I tend to think metro population is a better indicator of a city's actual size, and Spokane has a metro population of around 600,000, making it the 96th largest metro in the country, falling between Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and Toledo, Ohio. The Spokane Metro is home to six colleges and universities, most notably the college basketball powerhouse, Gonzaga University. Call me shallow, but when it comes to cities, I think appearances matter. Spokane's skyline isn't anything to write home about, but it's about what you would expect given the city's relatively modest population. If you were to take the average height of Spokane's tallest five buildings, it would be ranked as the 79th tallest city in the country, being just shorter than Boise, Idaho and taller than Topeka, Kansas. The tallest building in the skyline is the Bank of America Finance Center at 288 feet. When it comes to things that make the city unique, I have to start with the geographic feature that led to Spokane being here in the first place, Spokane Falls. Spokane Falls is the largest and most impressive urban waterfall in the country. When I visited Spokane for the first time, it was in the spring when the waterfall was absolutely raging. There is a gondola known as the Numerica Skyride that takes people across the river in front of the lower section of the falls. The Skyride also takes you under the historic Monroe Street Bridge. The bridge was the largest concrete bridge in the country at the time of its completion in 1911. The Numerica Skyride begins in the beautiful Riverfront Park, which was the site of the 1974 World's Fair and has several other unique Spokane attractions. One is the Louf Carousel, which is considered one of the most well-preserved wooden carousels in the country. Another landmark within the park is the giant Radio Flyer Red Wagon. The wagon is actually a playground with a slide coming down the handle. Across the Rivertail Pedestrian Bridge from the wagon are two of the remaining architectural landmarks from the World's Fair, the Great Northern Clock Tower and the United States Pavilion. Today's pavilion is an open-air skeleton of what it was in the 1970s, although the new design has its advantages. It was renovated in 2019 and now has light shows at night and is used to host various events throughout the year. One of those events is the annual Spokane Hoop Fest, which is the largest three-on-three -three basketball tournament in the world. Roughly half of the buildings in downtown Spokane are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. One of those is the historic Davenport Hotel. The hotel's most interesting feature is its opulent lobby, which was considered one of the finest lobbies in America at the time of the building's completion. Another interesting historic building is the Art Deco Fox Theater, which is home of the Spokane Symphony. The beautiful Art Deco design is particularly noticeable within the theater itself. The Spokane Flour Mill is another historic building worth mentioning. Built in 1985, it is one of the oldest buildings in the city due to the Great Spokane Fire burning down most of the buildings prior to 1890. The flour mill was repurposed into a shopping center in the 70s and now has various shops and the Clinker Dagger restaurant which has great views of the falls and Riverfront Park. Spokane's nickname is Lilac City because of the intentional proliferation of lilac bushes in the city during the 1930s. 
In 1938, the city held its first Lilac Festival, which is an annual event each spring. And I'll end by mentioning that the two largest state parks in Washington are both near Spokane. Mount Spokane State Park and Riverside State Park combined have over 21,000 acres of outdoor space for people in the area to explore. Well, that wraps up my video about Spokane. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.